everybody, welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna do a review of these eight foot long by two foot wide by 17 inch tall raised metal garden boxes we got from Amazon. And this brand is called uh, Veg Edge, I guess. Not sure how that's pronounced, but this big garden box came in this little bitty cardboard box. So we'll open one up. I've got four more that I need to put together and then we'll end up putting these out for flower gardens. These garden boxes come in 12 pieces and then it takes 48 of these little 10 millimeter Phillips head screws and nuts to put them together. And these are stainless steel hardware. So here are these boxes on Amazon and they are, instead of being galvanized, they're a zinc, aluminum, magnesium, stainless steel mixture. And these boxes, when we bought them, were $169 a piece. So they come in three different colors. It took me about 20 minutes to put this first one together. And a tip that I have right off the bat is I'm gonna use this first box that I assembled as a table to install the, to uh, put the other ones together. Because I've got my little creeper seat here, but while you're sitting on that and have to reach over to grab these bolts on the very bottom, kind of got tough. So raising this up a little bit, will help tremendously, I believe. Kind of just like the whole idea of the raised garden boxes. Pour it over this and use it as a table to assemble the next one of these. Here's our next garden box. Let's open it up and get ready to put it together. Kind of show you how this goes. Inside the box, we've got our four curved pieces that are the ends, and then we've got our eight panels that make up the sides. We also have an instruction book along with some planting ideas and our small box, our small bag of stainless steel hardware to put this together. We also have some aluminum. There's the little rubber edge guard for it. And in here, towards the bottom, there it is. Also in here are these supports to keep the box from bowing out or crushing in. Okay, and the way I began the first one that I built, which will be the same way I did this, the next one, is I put both end sections together. And then, when I have those together, I come back and put all of the side pieces together. So we're done with the box. One part of these garden boxes that was a little frustrating is to keep it from getting scratched up in shipping, they put a protective a uh, piece of cellophane over the metal. And these pieces <laughs> take quite a while to get pulled off, believe it or not. You have to be careful that you don't rip it. If you do, you end up scraping a bunch of little pieces off. Like that. So, not the end of the world, but remember, I've already done 12 of these pieces, so. Uh, starting at a corner and working off is pretty good. And yes, I did put the first two pieces together before I saw that was on there. In the bag of hardware, they give you this 10 millimeter wrench. What I found really speeds it up is a 10 millimeter nut driver put in the end of an electric drill. So that's how I put them together. The bag of hardware actually has extra washers and screws and nuts. So the first one I did, I had about four or five of these left over. So like I said, that's good because when you're putting these together, it's pretty easy to end up misthreading one of these nuts and then it's not worth messing with, just grab a different one. The only tools you need to install this is a Phillips screwdriver, a nut driver that's 10 millimeter or any kind of 10 millimeter wrench. I like the DeWalt gun, so that's what I'm gonna use. And then you need a uh, any kind of side cut pliers and that's to cut the rubber that goes around this when you're done is slightly longer than what the uh, metal is. So. I just had to cut off about six inches of that to make that piece right. And having this up just a little bit makes it a lot easier to get to and work on. So the installation of these, the nice thing is all these pieces can go either way. They're, they're mirror images, so the top is exactly like the bottom. So I just put a screw through, put a washer on the back side, and then put our nut on. Uh, 
And what I've done, what I've been doing that seems to work out pretty well is I will put all of these screws in before I tighten any of them. In, so I'll put all four of these screws in, then once they're in loosely, I'll come back and tighten all four of them and then just move to the next panel. You do have to have a little bit of dexterity uh, in your fingers to do this. If, uh, if your arthritis is much worse than mine is, it might be a struggle to do this. But you can get it done. It just may take a little bit longer. Maybe another dose of ibuprofen. <laughs> Okay, now that I've got all the screws in, I just come back with my screwdriver and hold the outside and hit it with the nut driver. And that's all there is to it. So we'll move all the way around and get this done. I'll put you on time lapse because I don't think you really want to see me put 48 of these screws in. And we'll move on to the assembling these. I noticed I skipped two holes while I was doing it. These are the braces that come with it and they're made so that you can, I guess, make them a little bit narrower or put these together and make it wider. But what we're doing is just the two foot one. So we use this piece and it just goes on with a screw and a washer. So there's the hardware I've got left, and looks like I've got one screw extra. I've got several washers and several nuts. These are those pieces to put the aluminum pieces together if you need to, which we're not using. There's our little tool, which I've never used. The last thing that we've got is our rubber edging. So this, uh, simply goes around and what I would do is whatever side you start on make that the back I guess just depending on how your situation is set up but this rubber molding just presses down along the seams and every time you get to a seam it's a little tougher but just push it down and this is one of the things that after you put in 48 of those little screws uh, if you've got arthritis, it might start wearing on your hands. Or does mine anymore. But I think the rubber piece is important. So I'm not going to skip it. Like I said, it's not a super, it's a doubled over bit piece of metal there. So it's not razor sharp or nothing. But I think this rubber piece will just kind of make sure you're not in there planting flowers or whatever you're doing that you end up maybe cutting yourself. The other thing you don't want to do is probably chip the paint off the edge, which on this top, you could do also running a, any kind of little shovel or something across it. So this is going to protect the edge, but we are, we've probably, I've been working on this for maybe 20 minutes, which was quite a bit quicker than the first one I did, I think. Of course, I knew what I was doing, so the second one's always better. And here's where you need the cutters.
There we go. Okay, this garden box is assembled. That's two. So I've got three more to do and I won't show you those. The next place we'll catch up is when we're putting this outside and getting ready to fill it with dirt. So this area in front of our house slopes quite a bit. So what we did was we used river rock to make three separate tiers in this. So the boxes are all level, but they're not level with each other. So we just used the uh, Bobcat and the little John Deere 1025R to put these boxes in and get them filled up. And what we've done is we're just using some gravel for a base. Underneath that, there's two layers of the black weed cloth. And then after we get all that done, we'll set those on top. Going to use this stuff here to level it. Then uh, put these rocks all around it and fill it with dirt and plant my flowers. So we put these boxes in on a bed of river rock and then we're just shoveling that river gravel around the inside of the box just to make kind of a dam so that the dirt doesn't spill out underneath it or work its way through any of the cracks in the rocks and stuff. Kind of build a little coffer dam around the metal box just at the bottom so when we come back and fill it with our garden dirt, uh, nothing gets out. It all stays contained. We put the dirt in these boxes with this little 1025R front loader and it worked okay for us, but I would caution against using a front loader to fill these boxes, even though it's the definitely the quickest way. If uh, your dirt is not perfectly like topsoil, you know, in other words, very soft, you could easily crush one of these garden boxes. You know, the things are not as sturdy as like even what a water trough, you know, would be it's uh, it is a light metal i think it'll hold up just fine for use as a garden box but if you dump a load of heavy clay in there it would not be good All right, so there are three garden boxes that we put in today, and we've got two more to do, but this project's just gonna use three of them in the front of the house. So we really like these. Again, we got these off Amazon. They're the veggie, I guess, raised metal garden boxes. And each one of them took two scoops of dirt with our 1025R tractor. So we really like these. If you like them, let us know. And if you liked the video, drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day yeah. and be safe.